i got go tutorial series and in this video we are going to build a, a key logger based on the websocket technology so uh, consider this video as an uh, advancement of the uh, previous video where we created a credential harvester but this time we are going to use a, a websocket which is more powerful in terms that we'll be able to capture each and every keystroke pressed by the user on a web page it's not like we have to enter something in a field and then click submit it will capture all the uh, keystroke pressed no matter where you press it yeah so that is about keylogger uh, which we are going to build today so without any further discussion let's jump straight into the code let me open vs code here Mm. so if you see here i've already built few files some i've already written some polar pro code here to save your time here uh, oh, let me quickly go through them each one by one so as you can see here this is a simple html uh, page where i have created a form uh, with username and password and a submit button and if you see carefully i've also included a, a javascript here file here so what this javascript file is going to do this javascript file is going to establish a websocket connection back to our uh, keylogger server where it's going to send all the keylogs pressed by the client or the rq user uh, now to uh, use this okay so how does this keylogger which we are going to build it will be useful in real life so let's say you have found a website where there is a cross site scripting vulnerability or you have some uh, control over that uh, server that you can execute that you can make your client uh, your uh, victim execute some arbitrary javascript then in that case you can use this uh, code which we are going to build today so let's say you are able to make your client execute some uh, a javascript in that case in our case it's a k.js file and what this js file is to so imagine that uh, that a k.js file is this or logger.js so if you read this it's an immediately Im invoked a function expression meaning a function without any name and you are immediately calling it so it's an a javascript function so here we are first creating a connection object ignore this for now the, now but this is not the actual file which will be served to our client uh, this will be used in our main uh, main.go file where we are going to use this as an js template and in this js template we are going to replace this uh, curly braces with double curly braces thing with our actual um, listening address so for user i mean for the uh, uh, for the victim the actual file will be k.js and to serve this k.js file we are going to use our main.go uh, uh, program which we are going to build apart from that we we need to build another function called uh, okay so index.js if you see we, we first need to serve this k.js file another thing is we need to serve the websocket connection from this js file if you see we need to serve this slash for ws path as well so two things we are going to do from our main file so now jumping to the main file here if you see i have already written some boilerplate code here uh, initially we have a package and some import statement in the var uh, in and here i have declared some uh, variables for you so the first one is an upgrader object so this upgrader object is going to be used uh, as soon as we receive the pipe socket connection on slash for ws path uh, we are going to upgrade our connection to pipe socket connection so initially it will be an http simple http connection then we are going to upgrade it to a web socket i mean oh, that's how the web socket works so this is for that and it also accepts such check origin function so this is used if we want to apply strict policy that don't accept a web socket connection from some other origin but in our case we want to be malicious and uh, what this is just for our own purpose we can say return true for any case but in your case if you want uh, to serve from a 
if you want to be your listening server to be very specific ip then you can uh, hard code here but in our purpose uh, for the demo video it's it's fine if we return true for all the cases and then we have a listening server which is a simple string a listening address which is a string object string variable okay so we'll take this string with uh, the, the listening address uh, as an command line argument flag argument and for that we are going to use this flag library standard uh, package here standard flag package then we have a js template so this js template variable is an instance of template dot template so a text dot template is a standard uh, a package from go then we have an init function so this init function is called even before the main function and it's generally used to initialize uh, variables and some state of the application so as you can see we are using the flag package and we are going to initialize our uh, listening address of a variable which we declared here so, so this will be taken from the command line argument uh, and this is the good description which will be uh, printed if we uh, do help no template so here what we are going to say template dot parse file logger dot js so from logger dot js going to read the text inside this and parse it and store it in this uh, template variable here if there is some error while parsing this uh, logger dot js then we'll immediately panic because no point because no point going f uh, for further if a template uh, is incorrect or something happens so we are immediately panicking and the program will exit now in the main function as i told earlier also we are going to serve two endpoints first is the ws request for the websocket connection and another is a k.js file request and we will simply start the server after that and for each of this endpoint we are going to have two handler functions here one is the websocket handler function another is the js file handler function so let me start first with uh, for writing the uh, websocket handler first so function uh, serve ws so as usual it's going to accept an http response writer and http request uh, object http response writer another is an a pointer to HTTP request request now inside this what we are going to say uh, as I mentioned earlier we first need to upgrade a connection to websocket connection so for that we'll say upgrader upgrader dot upgrade and this function will accept three parameters if you uh, if I hover over this it's first going to accept a response writer which we received here response writer and then the second one is request and the third one is response header if we want to s set any response header but in our case it's it can be nil so i'll say nil here now if there is some error i'll immediately uh, i'll immediately return the error uh, to the uh, I'll immediately return the error to the writer object and string I'll say empty and then status code will be 500 which is for internal server error I'll immediately return from this function because our connection is not successful in case our connection gets successful which is the ideal condition we'll first put defer our connection dot close method error just for proper code hygiene and then we'll say fmt dot print printf connection from from some uh, clients and for that I can simply say connection dot uh, remote address and string so this will give us the remote address of the client uh, and we can print that here so it will print the IP address and the port 
next is uh, okay so now i'm going to start a for loop infinite for loop where i'm going to continuously read some message from this connection a web socket connection and print it on the console now uh, a web socket is a long running connection so uh, if is uh, well that's why i'm going to start an infinite for loop and we want and also we don't know when the user is going to press a keystroke in the entire session so yes that is why we are going to use the for loop here infinite for loop okay so as you can see we have three variables here underscore message and error so as soon as we read a, a message from this uh, a web socket connection object we'll get three things the first is the number of bytes read which we don't need so that's why i'm using underscore here and the second is the byte array a message byte array so it's not in string it's a byte array we need to a type cast is to string and the third is error if this if there occurs some error so like always we'll do error check first not equal to nil we'll say uh, return nothing fancy then uh, if there is no error we'll say print f from s from this uh, client we received this keystroke and then slash n for address we'll simply do like we did earlier connection dot remote address dot string and to display the actual message here we'll say string we'll uh, typecast our uh, a message here which is an byte array to a string and yeah our sub for ws function is done now let's complete our second function here so th this is also a simple function serve js file same thing http uh, response writer and http dot request so here we are going to return a js file so for that we need to set an header uh, so we'll say header dot set so this is important guys because we are returning the content of logger.js with the uh, url replaced with our remote url and we want to serve the content of js file so we'll say content type equal to content type will be application javascript so with this header your browser will be able to recognize that oh, this is a javascript content and uh, accept this as a file javascript file so contact not context it will be content type content type application slash javascript and to return the actual uh, javascript here we'll say js template dot execute so not error this is execute so this execute method will accept two things the first is our uh, writer object so as you can see if i hover over this so the first is an io writer in and for this we can pass our http response writer and the second one is the context so we want to replace the inside logger.js we want to replace this with our actual listening address so for that we i will pass our listening address variable here okay, so now this function is also known now let's quickly type the main function here as well so here i'm going to use another package third party package called gorilla mux for uh, handling routes so i'll simply say new router here i have to import it okay so it's already imported strings we don't need i'll replace this hmm. so now i have created a router i'm going to handle these two endpoints i'll say r dot handle function 
so the first argument will be the path ws and the second is the actual handle function so we will say serve ws which we created earlier same thing for our js file handle function and path will be k.js and the serve js file at the end we'll start our mm, http handler uh, sorry http listener so we'll say http listen and serve first will be the port on which we are we want to listen the second will be the handler so this mux dot new writer creates a, a, a object of type handler and that's what we pass here http handler uh, and if this fails we are co uh, going to log this uh, on the console and a fatal means it will immediately exit if, if something error and http for listen and serve only returns when it fails uh, or it is stopped or interrupted uh, until then it keeps uh, on executing and it, it's blocked here so i think our program is complete here and we are trying to listen on port 8000 so let me go ahead and then text file i'll change this to 8000 as well <coughs> so like i mentioned earlier uh, this can be used in places where we want to exploit a um, arbitrary javascript execution vulnerability so let's say this index.html is some other uh, server where you are able to execute arbitrary javascript for the attacker in the attacker machine so i'll simply open this in my google chrome uh, before that well, let me start the listener here our main go program so as you can see i've passed a go run and the listen address flag as 127.8000 so let me refresh this page and we should see a connection string here okay so we got a connection now if i go ahead here and type some random string anything on this uh, or, or in this document and it doesn't matter if i type it in some field or anywhere on this page so i typed something here and let's see we got logs or not okay so we got logs for all the keystroke we typed on that page so let me show you an example here let, let's say user comes here and types admin and my password also as admin in some page so you will get all those logs here admin admin now you can be more creative with this app, uh, program and you can uh, put all these uh, keystrokes in a, a, a proper format with spaces and everything uh, in separate file uh, based on the uh, remote address so for each remote address you can create a, a separate file and you can be more advanced you are uh, only limited by your imagination so th this was the base thing base functionality which i wanted to show you guys how you can implement so from here i think you can take ahead and be more creative so yeah uh, that's all for this video thanks for watching see you in another video